We have an expression here in Norway. Du må holde tunga i rett munn. When dealing with one-sided forgeables, that's something I always keep in mind. If done right, the forge will be just shy of invisible to the sea. So early on, I forge in some kind of marker to tell me what's the right side up, or down in this case. When it comes to chisel, draw knives and the like, I tend to roughly forge in the bevel early on, but other times I'd set a line of center punch marks or similar physical marks that's easy to see and helps me to distinguish the steel from the iron. When forge welding, there's really only two things that matter. Correct heat and good contact. If you get the steel too hot, it'll crumble, and if it's too cold, it won't stick. Also, note that I didn't say hit it hard. Forge welding got nothing to do with brute force, and actually, hitting your pieces too hard might cause it to never weld, the pieces jumping apart instead of giving the molecules time to bond to each other. A factor that changes everything here is how clean your piece is. Oxidation and scale is the only reason why two pieces of steel doesn't weld together on its own. And if you want more information about the craziness of welding, ask NASA about the spontaneous cold steel welding in the vacuum of space. Yeah, it's a real thing. Down here on Earth, though, oxygen is abundant, and so is oxidation and scale. With mild steel, the welding point is so high that you can burn through the scale without destroying the steel, but with medium and high carbon steels, it's a different story. And this is where flux and borax comes in. Flux only does one thing, cleans off the scale and prevents oxidation, thus making it easier to weld two pieces together. All the different alloys of steel weld at different temperatures, but generally you're fine with getting sparks when melding mild steel but not so when welding together medium and high carbon steels. Practice is the key here, and working methodically helps a lot, especially if you don't know the alloy you're working with.
I started out with only a vague notion of what I wanted. A blacksmith's draw knife with the same styling concept as the blacksmith knives you see everywhere, just with a bit of flair from Stanley's spokeshape. This time though, there were no sketches, no looking up references or consulting of oracles. I knew I wanted to have about 15 cm of edge and found some scraps that was nearly the right size. Then it was just a matter of prototyping. And when you're doing something for the first time, make two. Then you got a spare when you eventually cock it up, or if you've done your homework right, you'll end up with two. That's never a bad thing. Thank you so much for watching. The spear draw knife will be given away to one of my patrons just over New Year's. And if you want in on the fun, you can follow the links in the description. Thanks to those wonderful people that you know watching this. And until next time, cheers.